Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make a cluster um, dangle or just a, a bead cluster. And you can use it to put um, on the end of a necklace, you know, in a mini album, um, make two exactly the same. You can have some earrings, um, however you like, and you can make them as long as you want, as bulky as you like. I'm going to show a very simple one, okay? So what I'll be needing, or what you'll be needing today, are um, six jump rings, okay? And they can be, these are just regular old, you know, very inexpensive ones that come for, uh, you know, a few hundred for a few dollars in a pack. But you can also use uh, sterling silver ones, such as these. I have different size jump rings. Um, the findings themselves can be um, sterling silver, um, whatever you like. Um, I'm going to be using one split ring for the end of the dangle because that's how I like to join things. It's just a little bit stronger. You don't have to use that. You can use just another jump ring. And these are four millimeter jump rings. Um, I have some pearls here. 11 um, pearls or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, any larger bead. I don't re quite recall what size these pearls are, but they're very inexpensive ones from like Walmart. Just to just kind of show you guys how to do that. Um, you are going to need... Uh, about 11 um, head pins okay um, for this project what's gonna happen is the dangle is gonna have one at the bottom and then two uh, um, as the ladder grows so uh, I need 11 head pins and with these they have decorative ones like such as the sorry so with the little um, ball end which are really cute they make a really cute dangle as you can see these are uh, platinum ones so if you want to make a nicer item for a gift definitely go for the better metals. Um, and then you're going to use a variety of your jewelry pliers. I have just some different chain nose, round nose, the three-in-one cutter or plier, um, and then a flush cutter. You are going to want something to cut close to the, um, the little dangles that we're going to make. So I'm going to show you something a little bit different than we did the other day. So let me put these jump rings to the side. We're not going to use any of those quite yet. And I'm going to show you how we're going to make the dangles. So for each of your 11 head pins, you're going to add a pearl or whatever bead you decide to use. Okay, so there's that. And let me see if I can get just a little bit closer. Okay, and all we're gonna do now is I'll take my flat nose plier and I'm gonna hold on to the, the head pin about an eighth of an inch or so higher than where the pearl ends. I'm holding the pearl down flush to the bottom of the uh, head pin and I'm going to twist that out just straight across just like you do normally anyhow, okay? And then I'm going to take my round nose plier and I'm just going to come in and I'm just holding on to it here, okay? Right where we bent it. I'm going to come over and push on the wire with my finger to bring it around the chain nose plier and then over you can either go to the left or to the right you're going to bring it to one side okay so I'm going to bring it over to the left so it's off a little sideways as you can see that I'm not turning my chain up my uh, plier here I'm just holding on to it so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the plier and hold on to it up here and now this extra piece we're not cutting it yet we're not doing anything but we're going to take it and we're going to push on it to start wrapping it around that little area that we left open, okay? As you can see, I'm bringing it around. And I'm trying to keep it as close to where it came from, okay? And at this point, you can either keep holding on to it however you like or um, with the round nose plier. You probably should just because you want to keep that round, okay? You want to keep your little opening here round. But you're going to continue pushing your wire around and around, and we are making a wire wrapped charm. Well, not while wrapped, because that would continue going, but just at this top part here, okay? And so now, when I I want to make them so they're all even, okay? So on the first one I made, I just made a sample one here. I have about three wraps. So for this one, I want to do just about three wraps. So now I'm going to cut that excess off with my um, flush cutter. So get as close as you can to the pearl without damaging it, and cut off that little extra piece. Oh, and there it goes flying. And then you can um, see this little area hanging out there, a little piece hanging out still. I'm going to try and smash that down as best I can. And then you can come in with like a very fine or your round nose plier to really um, crimp that in because you don't want that sticking out and scratching anybody. But now I have my little pearl with its little wrap around the top. And what happens there is that it will keep it very secure. This is not going to open up. Um, you can always make the regular dangle like I showed in the previous videos where you, all you do is 
make your L shape, make your loop, and you're done. But this is just a little more decorative, okay? So I'm gonna do that with all 11 pearls you made here. Um, what I'm gonna start doing is showing you what we're gonna be doing. So you're gonna take your little jump ring, like I said, this is a four millimeter jump ring. And um, generally, I'm not, you know, too, too, um, delicate with these like you need two different pliers if I'm using my flat nose and the 3 in one plier and when you open your jump ring you're going to just twist it to opposite sides twist one one way and one the other you don't pull them open okay because that makes them weaker so then I'm going to take one of my pearls and just put it right on there and um, pretty much that's it for this one okay now um, I'm just going to close it up so this is the very bottom of your of your cluster. It's going to start with just the one pearl on one jump ring, okay? So now what we're going to do, and you think, oh, you can just add it. Well, no, you still need to open it. So I'm going to get the next jump ring, another jump ring. And you can do this with any size jump ring. If you have larger pearls or larger items, um, just use a larger jump ring. And that will also extend the length of the, the cluster. It makes it look a little different, so it's up to you. So now I'm going to place this jump ring on the jump ring that we just placed, okay? So I'm going to Put it right in there. Okay, so now I have the jump ring that's closed, the new jump ring. And on this new one, I'm gonna take one of my pearls. Oops, <laughs> of course, it would just fall right out. On this new one, I'm gonna take one of my pearls and put it on the left of the jump ring, on this left side, okay, as you can see there. And then I'm gonna take another pearl. I'm gonna hold on to it with the right, on the right left side. I'm gonna take another pearl and put it on the right side of the jump ring. Okay, so now I have this little bead cluster here. Now I'm going to close up my jump ring. Again, just twist it back closed. Okay, so now I have this gorgeous little set. It looks pretty already. I mean, if you just put that on some earrings, you'd be good to go. So now there's that one. I'm going to lay this down for a second. And then I'm going to grab another, oops, jump ring. And again, just open it up, just like we've been doing. Just twist it. Now I'm going to add this to that last jump ring that we added, where we added the two. Of course, I'm going to have to find it because now... Okay. So here's the first one with its jump ring that connects to the second one with the two on the opposite sides. I don't know if you can see that better. Now I'm going to add this to that second jump ring, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add a pearl on the left and add a pearl on the right. And okay, so I'm just going to continue adding the, the pearls and continue working all the way up. So I just close that one up. And if there's a little gap there, just kind of press it with your pliers so that you end up with a nice um, closure. Okay, you don't want to have a space opening there. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with the last three jump rings, adding them, and then adding a pearl on either side, closing it up, add the next one, pearl on either side, close it up. Okay, so I'm going to do with all um, six of the jump rings that we have. Okay, guys, so I built it up, and look how cute that is. So this is all of them. This is the sixth jump ring. Um, it's just you know the very last set of two that I've added. And before I close it, I just want to show you I'm going to add my um, split ring. And I like a split ring, like I said, just sturdier. If you want to add another jump ring or go right into adding your ear wires or um, whatever you're going to attach it to, then go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to place the jump ring. I just placed it right on that loop. And let's close it up. And now when I let it go, I have my my split ring at the end and this cute dangle at the bottom there. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. I mean, it just, it has a lot of character. Very quick, very simple. I mean, this took me all of maybe five minutes, um, you know, after I put the head pins on because that takes a little more of the time. But you can also start, I just want to give you some notes. Um, you don't have to use jump rings at every juncture. You can get a piece of chain um, or, you know, they sell different lengths of chain and types of chain. Just get a chunk of chain, cut it off, and then add your your dangles to that. But you're still going to have to add it, you know, in a way that's um, either just the regular old dangle you know, when you just turn it and then put it on there, if that makes sense to you guys. But I think it's fun with the jump rings, and then you can adjust it however you'd like. And you can continue growing this. You can make it chunkier, add some gold items, some metal items, some other, you know, types of things uh, as far as, like, types of um, beads. I think they look so beautiful. So anyway, I'll have some pictures for you, and I hope that it helps you guys. And another beading basic on how to make a bead cluster. See you at the next one. Bye, guys.